happy Saturday. I'm just here with Chotaro. I am um, a few weeks ago I reordered my Four Sigmata ground coffee and I've been loving that in the French press. I swear, I don't know if it's the mushrooms, they just kind of they elevate the coffee flavor somehow, maybe the, the lignans or whatnot. I've really been enjoying that. So I'm drinking that. I did a little uh, workout routine this morning. And oh, I want to show you, I got some more hair bands from Headbands of Hope. I got this cute pink one. It's similar to the gold one that I have. I love this, the, these. Um, they stay in place and they don't pull my hair. And just, I just think they look really pretty. And for somebody like me who can't be bothered, or doesn't have the skill set to do my hair, this really helps step up my my hair care, my hair look. Uh, I don't want my hair is long. If I don't spend a little bit of time with it, it can it can look messy. <laughs> so this these have really helped me to kind of look a little bit more put together without having to use much effort. So, anyways, yeah, I got a new pink one, and then I also got um, some black one, a black one with gold polka dots and a little top knot. I just think these look cute, like easy easy ponytail bun type thing and put this on it just kind of it just kind of makes a cute look so I've enjoyed the, I've enjoyed the top knot ones I got the black one and then I also got one with roses on it isn't that pretty yeah I love this company they donate a hairband to every hairband you buy they donate one to a child with cancer but I wanted to share something else with you a skincare product that I've been using for the past roughly three weeks um, as a side note, I finished the $275 Growth Factor Serum from Neocutis. It came and went in my skincare usage. I, you know, I made my way through it. I don't miss it. I honestly don't think it was doing anything, as I said in that video. So, yeah. Um, anyways, that's, that has come, come and left the building. And this is a product that, like that, you know, I would say... Obviously, it's not necessary. The more stuff you use, the greater the risk of problems developing. But this is a type of product that you see me use a lot and I do kind of enjoy using. And that is a hyaluronic acid-based um, kind of serum or booster underneath my moisturizer, particularly targeting areas where there's just wrinkles and fine lines. And I'm just looking for a little bit of extra hydration beyond what my moisturizer typically just provides. <clears throat> and I love, obviously, the Neutrogena Hydro Boost fragrance-free gel cream. I also have really been loving their body lotion on my face. Works quite well. Anyways, those products both are features just hyaluronic acid, which is a humectant, and I really like them. But uh, a few weeks ago, I reordered my Necessaire Sex Gel. That is the personal lubricant that I love and recommend you guys. I use it in my nose to cut down on nosebleeds. It has, I've been going through it like gangbusters this uh, this winter, and I haven't gotten a nosebleed yet. No, no, no. Yeah, I just put a little in my nares, and it helps keep them hydrated and keeps them from getting nosebleeds. So yeah, I've been going through that. I reordered it a few weeks ago, and I saw on their website this product, and at first I was like, oh, what is that? And then I looked carefully at it, and I was like, that actually looks promising. It's their body serum. Hear me out on this. It's fragrance-free. Uh, it's a hyaluronic acid serum, but it also has a few other very good ingredients. It has um, ceramides in it, which in products applied to the skin can help your skin bearer to say, hey, let's make some more of our own um, natural moisturizing factors and barrier protection and restore restore skin barrier functions. They can be helpful, those are in there. It also has niacinamide, an ingredient that is anti-inflammatory, can calm down redness. For some people, I don't know why, it does sting and cause them some irritation. It's in the CeraVe moisturizers that I love and use and recommend. Um, it's in a lot of moisturizers, so it has that. And you know, a lot of people will buy a dedicated niacinamide serum, and a lot of people will go out and buy a dedicated um, uh, ceramide serum I see those as well and these are all just ingredients that you know there's no reason why they can't be combined into one affordably priced product uh, which I'll get to in a moment about the price on this but 
Uh, yeah, ceramides, and then it also has an emollient in it, marula oil. I have a video talking about marula oil, so check that out. It's not magical. You know, I don't recommend people like chase after different oils and like try and find the magic oil <laughs> out there. If you have a moisturizer or a product that has one of these oils in it, great. Um, I think it's better to use them when they're already in products because there are things that can help stabilize the oil. The problem with oils, is that there's no uh, regulation or oversight in terms of the quality and they're not reproducible substances. So you can get a lot of variability. You can even have some oils, uh, plant oils, that depending on the time of year they're harvested or whatever, they lack the same extent, the same spectrum, if you will, of of anti antioxidants and things that, that you're kind of seeking in, in using the oil. Oils can degrade and cause irritation and problems. In products, they tend to be stabilized and so they're less risky. And marula oil is a pretty stable oil, so, uh, you know, it's in all the drunk elephant products. Anyways, that's in there, so it's an emollient. Emollients oils, all they do is they smooth and soften edges. It's the humectants that bring hydration in, the hyaluronic acid. It's things like ceramides that help your skin barrier to restore itself. This product doesn't have an occlusive ingredient <clears throat> like petrolatum or dimethicone, which would help seal and trans epidermal water loss. So you do have to apply it underneath a moisturizer. Um, but it has some really good ingredients in it and it's free of added fragrance. Oh, the other thing it has in it is gluconolactone, which is a poly polyhydroxy acid. I have a video on polyhydroxy acids. Like hyaluronic acid, they are humectants, but they also can lightly precise and very precisely uh, exfoliate some built up dead skin cells, photo damaged skin cells. And they're very easy to tolerate for people with sensitive skin and they're in a lot of moisturizing products. So it has that in it. A lot of people will buy a polyhydroxy acid serum. This already has that in it. So you're getting a lot, a lot of good ingredients formulated in this product. So the way that I used it is I actually filmed myself using it last night. So I'll put that footage in here as I tell you how I used it. Basically, you know, when I get out of the shower immediately, I just put my hair up into that t-shirt towel. And the very first thing I do, I mean, I don't towel off my body or my face. I don't use a towel, nor, you know, I don't recommend using towels and towel drying because at that point when your skin is damp, uh, you know, not soaked, but damp, you know, there's some dampness. That's really when you want to put moisturizing products on right away because they lock onto that moisture and they help hold it into the skin. And then you put something more occlusive on, like a, a more occlusive moisturizer on top and <clears throat> That'll seal that water in there and really help with dry skin conditions tremendously. So anyways, I get out of the shower, put my hair up in the t-shirt towel, and then immediately to a wet face, I put on moisturizers. And if I'm going to do hyaluronic acid boosting products, I put those on first. Um, I put them on first and then immediately layer on over a more occlusive moisturizer. So I put the body serum on my face and then I covered it with, currently I'm using Claire oil-free facial moisturizer. I really like that a lot. So yeah, I layered that on over top and then I just let it dry. You know, I'm, I put moisturizer on the rest of my body after I've done that. So then I put moisturizer all over my body after doing my face. And then I, uh, at that point, I end up taking my hair out of the t-shirt towel and pinning it up. And after that is when I put my tretinoin on because at that point, the skin on my face is clean because I just washed it. It's dry as it should be before putting tretinoin on, but it's moisturized because I put the moisturizer on first. And moisturizer goes on, it's damp, it's wet, um, it's greasy, but it'll soak up into the skin and then dry. And it's, you know, you can feel your skin is dry but it's moisturized. It's not flaky, it's not, it's not dry dry. It's not xerotic. It's moisturized, hydrated, but not wet. It's non-wet skin. <clears throat> In my experience, that is the best time to put tretinoin on to minimize irritation. It does not compromise the efficacy or the outcome of the results. So that's how I personally use it and I think it works well using it that way. But if you wash your face, and if you put it on, if you put tretinoin on to damp skin, highly irritating doing it that way. You put it on to damp skin, tretinoin is irritating. You put it on to damp skin, the water starts evaporating out of your skin and 
causes the tretinoin to be more irritating. It worsens dryness in the skin and makes the tretinoin even more, even more irritating. Never put it on damp skin. But if you wash your face and then you, you dry it off with a towel and you don't put moisturizer on, then you're dealing with a clean, dry, xerotic face. So your, your skin has lost a lot of moisture. The skin barrier is severely compromised. It's compromised because you've just stripped away some of the natural uh, barrier function from cleansing the skin. So if you put tretinoin on at that point, which most, a lot of people do, it can be pretty irritating. And that's why, you know, tretinoin is so irritating when people do it that way. Doing it my way, uh, you kind of restore some of that barrier function, hydration in the skin, and then you put the tretinoin on. And it doesn't, it doesn't seem to alter the outcome whatsoever <clears throat> as far as efficacy, but it significantly reduces irritation. So that's how I use it. But you guys ask me a lot of questions about layering different ingredients. And I really just don't feel comfortable answering that for you all because I don't know you. I don't know like what actual skin conditions you have your medical history. So you have to talk about that kind of thing with your dermatologist. I can only talk <clears throat> about different ingredients and what they do and kind of show you how I use them, but you have to, you really have to talk to your healthcare provider, especially when it comes to uh, prescription topical medications because it's pretty nuanced. And so, I, you know, I can't, I can't answer that for you, unfortunately. So yeah, that's how I use the body gel on my face and I love it. It also is really nice on the body, um, but it's it's not sticky or greasy or anything. It's really lightweight though, so I don't think it's good enough as just a body moisturizer by itself for winter for like dry skin conditions, but it's really nice on the face. And as far as the price, I think it's a great value because for example, the ordinary hyaluronic acid serum is like close to $7 for one ounce. At least it is, I think, at Ulta and Sephora. This product, but there are obviously more ingredients in the product, more, act, more active ingredients that all work well together. Personally, I think it's a better, it's a great value. Even though, don't be put off by the price when you see it. I mean, five ounces is pretty big. You don't need a lot if you're using this on your face. And I love the packaging too. I mean, it's in a pump, it's opaque. These ingredients are stable. You know, they don't have stability issues per se, and it's airtight. This is just ideal, in my opinion. It's a great value size, in other words. And this company is really <clears throat> pretty um, steadfast on cutting down on excessive waste and from packaging. Like I know their boxes, and everything are made out of recycled material, even the ink, I believe. Yeah, they're really conscientious about that. So I've, I've obviously used the, the uh, personal lubricant in my nose for like two years now, and I swear by it and strongly recommend it. Uh, but the body gel cream is turning out to be a great one for as a face serum. So yeah, I'm loving that. Sunscreen I used this morning it came from one of you guys, um, and I think it's the same viewer who sent me the foot cream that I talked about last week. It's Ombra Sun. This is a <clears throat> chemical sunscreen. It's a chemical sunscreen. It has uh, obviously filters in it that are fantastic, but not approved here in the States. So you get much more stable UVA uh, coverage with this. It has Uvenol A+. Uvenol A+, is the ingredient that is what avabenzone wants to be, I guess I would say. Avabenzone is a chemical filter that we have here in our chemical sunscreens that protects against UVA-1 and UVA-2. Um, but it suffers from a limitation in that it's not stable. So when you go outdoors, within about an hour, the avabenzone loses about 36% of its protection. It's a, protective ability. Unless the avabenzone has been stabilized. It can be stabilized through the presence of other chemical filters, the majority, if not all of which, are not approved in the U.S. It also can be stabilized by different coatings. Juvenile A+, however, <clears throat> does UVA-1 and UVA-2, but is really stable, doesn't have that degradation issue. So this sunscreen has that in it. 
It also has a filter that <clears throat> I don't see too often. It's called Iscotrizinol or Uvisorb. And that is a filter that covers UVB really, really well, the, the rays that burn your skin. And it also covers some UVA, uh, not as much as, as Uvinol A+, but it covers some UVA. This is a good everyday moisturizer. It's just SPF 30. Yeah, I mean, if you're going skiing outdoors, I wouldn't recommend using this. It's not enough protection, but just for everyday use, like when you're mostly indoors, um, you know, some of you who live in different areas of the world will frequently comment that it's dark for the majority of the day and you're like, do I really need to be wearing sunscreen? You do because A, it's a habit and if you stop wearing it during those months, then you'll, you'll lose the habit of putting it on when you need it. You won't have it on when you, when you need it. You won't, you, know, you won't be used to it. So it's important to keep doing it for that reason. It's also important because, uh, you know, to a certain extent, the LED lights and light bulbs we're now learning can have effects and consequences on the skin, particularly pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. So it's helpful to continue to protect your skin against those. We actually have good, good evidence now to show that wearing sunscreen does not cause vitamin D deficiency. In fact, we have some compelling, inf uh, you know, compelling reasons to believe, although no, it's no proof, that actually wearing sunscreen, particularly sunscreens like this that have good UVA protection, might actually make your skin better at vitamin D synthesis from the sun. The reason for that is the majority of the UV that comes from the sun is not the right wavelength for vitamin D synthesis. It is, it's a small, small, tiny fraction that is responsible for vitamin D synthesis. And that gets overtaken by everything else. The, and the everything else is mostly UVA. And in fact, that UVA actually degrades to a certain extent the vitamin D processing ability of your, of your skin. Uh, the enzyme machinery is compromised by that mega dose of UVA. It relies on UVB. That's what, it, that's what it's using. A, so a, certain, a specific wavelength of UVB, not all UVB. But it's the, the UVA is really the majority of the ultraviolet radiation that comes from the sun. And that kind of wipes out the vitamin D synthesis factor. So it's actually thought, although again, not proven, that if you wear sunscreens that have really good UVA blocking ability, that you block out some of that that, no, that those destructive rays that compromise how well your skin can do vitamin D synthesis, and it might actually make it easier for your skin to make vitamin D from the sun. So yeah, you should wear sunscreen for that reason, but you know, when you're living somewhere where it's super dark most of the day, yeah, I hear you. Like, do you need to be wearing this super zinky, high, high SPF sunscreen all over your face and covering up? to the degree that I would encourage you strongly if you live say in Australia or New Zealand or uh, here in Texas where the sun is always shining, super bright and super intense and reflecting off of everything. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably not, but you still need to do it. So, you know, you can get away with, you can get away with SPF 30, but you know, it's, it's just good practice to make sure you're putting it on for the reasons I explained and reapply it a few times a day just to get in the habit of doing it. And you benefit from the fact that sunscreens are moisturizers, which you, you know, during the times of the year, oftentimes when it is dark, it's also cold and dry. So that's helpful. You're getting, you, you, you know, you, ha you have the moisturizer there. So this one's great. It's not greasy. It doesn't leave a cast. It's very good for sensitive skin, obviously. It's fragrance free. And it's great for oily prone, acne prone skin. I didn't find it balled up or pilled up. It's just a nice everyday moisturizer. So oh, candle update. I just fired up this uh, Pier One candle that I got from one of you nice people for Christmas from Pier One, sugar, sugar sprinkled spice. This is nice, it's like a nice warm vanilla. I'm rather enjoying it. I love these Pier One candles. I had some over the uh, fall time, some kind of apple-y, pumpkin-y types that were really nice. I happen to think they compete with the Bath & Body Works ones. However, just like Bath & Body Works, they do go pretty fast. In other words, the burn time is a little shorter than Tuscany. But they put out a really nice scent similar to the Bath and Body Works ones. I've been happy with all of the Pure One three wicks. 
Yeah, this one's nice. It kind of reminds me of the, Bath & Body Works has like a warm vanilla sugar. This is very similar to that. And last night I made a huge tub of uh, my soy milk yogurt. I am really loving that stuff. So I'm just gonna pop that into the Frigidaire. Yeah, it's uh, it's got such a nice tang, tangy yogurt flavor to it. And you could put the Stevia flavor drops in, the different ones, you know, they have all different kinds. Sweet Leaf are the best in my opinion, but it's this to me is very much what Dan and Dan and plain vanilla yogurt used to be. So I've really been loving that. It's super easy. I make it in my Kosari slow cooker as a yogurt maker setting, yogurt making setting. Anyways, speaking of Kosari, you guys were asking me how I've been liking the dehydrator my mom got me. I love it. There's a little, is that stuck on there? Who knows? Like a rogue de dehydrated carrot. I haven't actually tried dehydrating carrots. I think that's just uh, me shredding carrots and it, <laughs> a shredded carrot piece end up there. Anyways, this was the last thing I dehydrated. I did some mango and I put it in there a little too long. <laughs> so it's pretty crispy, but it was rather good. This particular mango, it, it wasn't that great though from the get go. Um, so I've definitely had better dried mango, but I think it's going to be worth giving another go with better, with some better mangoes. So yeah, I've really been loving orange, oranges in there right now and zucchini. I need to do, um, banana. Bobby, he's so happy to see me, you guys. He missed me. You got your carrot here. Where'd it go? Yeah, this looks like a, a doggy daycare, <laughs> doesn't it? So, no promises, but I kind of want to get back into crochet a little bit. And last week when we went to Half Price Books, I got this Beginner's Guide to Crochet. And looking through the book, it seems like a good one because it's 20 projects, but each project builds upon the a skill set. So you get basically a new, a new little lesson, learn a new technique, and then the, the following project kind of uses that technique. I know how to crochet, like I know how to do that in this but it's been a while and some of my like skills like increasing decreasing and whatnot are kind of rusty so i thought this would be a good place plus the patterns are actually really cute like this little these teddy bears and the coasters i thought were adorable the coastal coasters and that little collar thing so there's simple projects i thought this would be good we'll see no promises you guys don't expect to see anything from me maybe in 30 years i'll crank out i'll crank out a doily so don't hold your breath <laughs> you waiting for mama little boy oh you have so much love in your heart there she is Did you have a good week? Oh, yes. How's your uh, sewing machine? Um, I worked uh, on it and it's going really well. Do you uh, make anything in the past? I don't have anything book? to show right yet. Yeah. <laughs> I, I told them, I was showing them the crochet book that I got. And I said, don't, don't hold your breath. It might take a while for me to yeah, make something. It's, you know, that's the thing about crafts are they're very time intensive time intensive yeah but oh so attractive and compelling uh-huh exactly especially in the crafts you are just so hyper <laughs> Anyways, guys, I'm going to wrap up the vlog here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen, sunscreen and, subscribe. and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.